Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Carry people. It's uh, your boy, the Big Canucker here, and uh, we've got our Friday wrap-up wrap, and um, yeah, I just kind of want to go over a few things here throughout the week. Uh, there's some been some, some stories I want to share. I've got a few questions uh, that have been sent in from the, uh, the folks out there, and uh, we'll see if I can help you out with that. And um, yeah, so first thing I want to talk about is the, I wanted to say, you know, I'm not sure if you guys realize, but many of you guys do. I, I'm a real big Spyderco fanboy. I started collecting knives and the first knife I actually had was a Kershaw. And um, a Kershaw Storm 2, I think is what it was called. It was a little recurve blade and uh, I don't even know, remember what the steel was in it. I ended up giving it to my son who he promptly lost it. But with the job, I got this job about 10 years ago. Uh, current job selling worth uh, shop supplies and stuff like that. And I needed something to open up packaging and cardboard boxes to break it down. And I went down to Walmart and for 42 bucks, I think it was 10 years ago, I picked up this little Kershaw Storm and it fit my hand all right. And I had a little kind of flipper tab on it. Didn't know duly squat about sharpening knives or knives whatsoever. And for me, that was okay for a couple of years. And then I ended up having some issues with the Kershaw Storm. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Uh, it had something to do with the, it had some pivot issues. So I, did, I started looking up online and I ended up finding the, the company Spyderco. And the first one I pulled the trigger on was a Spyderco Tenacious. And it was a tremendous knife. And, and you know what, it, not only that, it, the ergonomics of it, uh, the sound that it makes, there's nothing quite like a Tenacious when it clicks open in your hand. It's got its own unique sound. You know, it's a little liner lock, but I, I really fell in love with the, the spider hole. Um, I fell in love with a lot of hole throughout my life, but uh, <laughs> that was the smallest, I think. <laughs> uh, I, I like the spider hole, uh, the hole, the flickability of it. It was such a fidget knife, and I'm a, a fidgety guy to begin with. And... So that just kind of started off. And then from there, it was another Spyderco, another Spyderco, another Spyderco. And I've got some other Grail knives that I'd like to get. Uh, a Microtech out the front, even though it's legal in Canada, I'd like to have one in here. Um, uh, I'd also like to have a 940 uh, Osborne uh, Benchmade. I think the access lock is tremendous. I just got to pull the trigger on it, on a few of those things. And you know, when I get back to work and I get you know money flowing, then that'll probably be more my game I'll look at it but for now I'm sharpening knives I've got a little other little business I'm kind of trying to clear some headlights to make a few bucks on that too as well and sold some you know some of my other knives just to try to keep this channel going and try to keep my uh my passion you know going too as well and now another huge thing that uh, why I'm a, a real big spider co uh, fanboy is this little story too. I ended up scraping uh, and sharpening a pile of knives and sold some stuff. And I ended up picking myself up a Spyderco Pison. And it is one of my grail knives. And it is by far the most expensive Spyderco knife that they've ever made. And you would think that you wouldn't have an issue with it. But mine developed an issue with the stop pin worked its way out of the integral knife. Now, it's a, if you're not familiar with that with that particular knife, it is actually an integral, and it is I mean, basically what that means is it's got one full titanium body, and there's no backspacers, there's no joints, there's no scales or anything like that. It's just everything is completely machined out of uh, out of uh, titanium, one block of titanium, other than the, the pin. Now, the pin is actually a pressed pin in here and it's a different piece and they do it so seamlessly you can't even tell it's there most times but mine started to work its way out so i sent it into spyderco and they said look there's no way that we can fix it um we're gonna have to replace the entire knife but it's gonna take an awfully long time and uh, i thought you know what i mean i wasn't like jumping up and down because of it but um you know so i said okay great you guys are the experts uh, you know i trust you when you can get me the knife, get me the knife. And over the next month or so, I kind of kept in touch and I asked them, and they, you know, if they have any idea when they're going to get one. And they told me they didn't. And then I mentioned, well, can I get something different? 
And they said, you know, absolutely. You, you have up to the MSRP of the Spider Co. Paisan. And then I said, can I get two knives or three knives? And they said, yes, as long as you're up to the MSRP of the Paisan. So I asked them for the first thing I asked them was for the bombshell. All right, I looked on the, on the site and I thought, man, that's what a, you know, a gorgeous little, you know, pickle of a knife. And, you know, it's only 1,250 that made it in the entire world. They're a flash batch. So that means now they're going to destroy the tooling after they're done making the batch of 1,200. That's it. They're done. They'll never make another one. This one happens to be number 883 out of 1,250. So it's a numbered knife. Um, and I just thought, what a way to go. I'll ask them for that. And they told me right off the bat, they said, um, we're not sure if we can do that one because it is a flash batch. They sell it very fast and I have to deal with the warranty. I don't get to deal with the store. And I thought, okay, well, and then the other thing I thought was perhaps I can get another coveted knife, which is the Fastback, which is a Martin Sleas is a genius designer. And I'm going to actually do a review on this probably next week. Um, not a long-term review, but I'm going to give you my thoughts on the knife. And, you know, they're mostly positive. There's a little bit of uh, things with this knife that we're going to go through. Okay, but so they said, yes, we'll put, the, it hasn't released yet, but we'll put you on back order and we'll get that one happening. But I really, really wanted one of these uh, bombshells. And so I said, perhaps, well, maybe can I get a Spydeco Shaman in the Rex 45? And they said, well, that one's... You know the same kind of same kind of way deal it's not a flash batch but it is a i can't remember the put my name on but they only make a certain amount and they'll make a they'll the the shaman in a uh a certain way for a little while and then they may do it again a little bit and they told me that i'd be better off kind of maybe working for the waiting for the bombshell so they, we left it at that i said you guys are the pros no problem now of course because i'm off work and i do lots of youtube watching too as well i noticed that were some reviewers out there who started to uh review the bombshell and of course i was a little bit disheartened so i ended up uh phoning uh spartaco and sending him an email and they just basically um, you know they, they didn't brush me off by any means they just said you know what we're in the process we'll see what we can do and um from there i actually went on to the spartaco forums and i put a little you know, I was a little disheartened and I, you know, I said, should I, I had a little post on there called, should I be disappointed? And I just wanted to kind of hear from, from other knife guys out there. And for the overwhelming majority of the people out there said, you know what? Um, they, they're a good company. They'll look after you. Uh, and they also let you know up front that they probably, they might not be able to get it. So, you know, keep your, your expectations realistic. Um, and I, and I did, uh, it made me feel quite a bit better. Um, and then the other thing that absolutely amazed me and blew me away was the fact that Sal Glasser, the owner and creator and founder of Spider Code Knives, actually messaged me himself and said, "Look, um, I understand your you know your, your frustrations. Let me see what I can do, and let me look into it for you." And I said, "Hey, no problem. I appreciate it so much, Sal. Uh, it's just fantastic to be you know from a little Canadian guy out here talking to." Uh, how do I say, you know, like, it's almost like a, like a hero. I mean, like, it was such a huge part of my life, you know, knives and stuff like that. And, you know, the big daddy Sal himself, the send me a message, made me feel like I, you know, was a valued customer. And the very next day, I got an email from Pitney Bowes saying, my package from Spyderco is on the way. And then I got a call from the warranty department saying, look, we didn't tell you that we have one coming for you because I wasn't hundred percent sure that day. But the day I found out, which was 24 hours later, they said, it's on the way you got one coming. And I was just over the moon. And I watched that little tracking thing go from golden Colorado to Chicago, Illinois, to Vancouver, to Calgary, to Lethbridge, to my door. And I watched it like 10 times a day. And that just made me feel um, over the moon, like, and it just reinforced my my love of the Spyderco knives and the Spyderco brand, and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, yes, I'm a fanboy, but they've also looked after me very, very well. And uh, the other thing too is like, you see, you've got two absolutely 
crazy different products coming from the same company. And the only thing that's the same on this is the fact that each one has the spider hole in it. So that just goes to tell you, I think, um, why that's another reason why I like Spyderco. So that's my little thank you so much Spyderco rant. And just to say, awesome. Now, there is uh, one other thing too as well. Um, now on to a, you know, a separate thing here. Okay, I did get a email from a uh, subscriber by the name of Adelef. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, A-T-A-L-E-P-H. And any questions that you guys have, concerns, you know, please, please uh, either put them in the comments or send me an email at bigcanucker uh, bigcanucker at gmail.com. And uh, I'd be more than happy to look after whatever I can for you. Now, one of the questions he had is, um, why does, because uh, in my work knife video, I had put, uh, filed, uh, Re choil sharpening choils in just about every one of those knives, if not every single one. And he wanted to know why, if you didn't have a, a choil, a sharpening choil in the Spyderco knife or some of the knives, that why it will kind of develop a recurve. And I just thought that I would show what I think the reason is for. And um, all right, so this knife here does not have a sharpening choil. Now, here is what's called the Ricasso. Now, when they actually shape this blade and they uh, they end up at the very base of this knife by the Ricasso, you can see that it is thicker than the rest of the blade, okay? So now, if you don't put a little sharpening choil in that spot right about there, What's going to happen is as you start, even if you're running this completely down this flat blade, down a sharpening stone, you're going to get this part sharp and you're going to apex it. But this really, really thick spot here is not going to apex unless you take away all this meat here. Okay. And most of us don't want to sharpen and take that meat all the way there. So what ends up happening is it only gets apexed to about here, okay? And so as you sharpen more and more, you're basically wearing away part of the blade. It will start to um, wear away where this will stay completely that size, where this will go up. And then now it doesn't usually because of the way we sharpen by hand and the way that we're kind of, um, the way that your, your basically your mind works is if, you know, as, you're, as you're sharpening it, you're never so precise that you're gonna have a complete, just a line here. You're gonna sharpen a little bit more here sometimes, a little bit more there sometimes, and it's eventually going to stay, that's gonna stay the same, and it's gonna work its way back up. And so you're gonna get, a little bit of a recurve in there without that sharpening choil. So now, if you're to actually take this and um, file down a little half moon there, you're gonna have, you're gonna sharpen, be able to put that very back end on your um, on your uh, stone too as well. So you'll be able to take, take it right to the end of the stone. If you have that little flat spot, you're not gonna be at the end of the stone. So I hope that shows you how um, that will develop a recurve if you don't put a sharpening choil in there. And I might put a sharpening choil in this one here. I mean, I really, really like the knife. It's awesome. And I do a really, really good job of it. You can hardly tell. So I probably will put one in here, but I don't know if I'll put one in here. And you can see where it is, you know, got some fatness in the back there too as well. But I think I might keep this more stock and Normally my knives aren't safe queens, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mirror polished edge on this particular one and I'm going to use this as kind of a, just a fun carry, break down a little bit of cardboard here and there. Uh, and if I ever decide that this one needs to go away, if I keep it without the sharpening trail, maybe it's, who knows? Just, I just don't think I'll put one in this here right now. All right, so I hope that helped you out too as well. Now, there's also another... Um, uh, viewer or subscriber named Steve Sager or Sager S-A-G-E-R wants to know if I can get a pair of three and review that 
And I'm gonna see what I can do uh, about a pair of three. That is on my hit list. Uh, and my birthday is next week and uh, I've asked my kids for a knife and I think I'm going to look at a shaman. Even though it's, it's older, um, I've, I held a shaman up at Target Knives up in Calgary and oh my goodness, the ergonomics were tremendous and I've always wanted one. So I think that's gonna be my next one. If there's a few things, uh, I've got a few knives that I've got kind of up for sale kind of kicking around selling it but there's a few things i might just put up for sale and if i can do that in a relatively short time i think i would maybe bring in a pair of three and i think the pair of three that i'd like to get is the pair of three in maximum uh, i've heard wonderful things about that steel and i'm a little bit of a steel, a steel snob too after watching you know cedric and ada gear channel and all his steel testings i mean that guy i don't understand why he's not walking around with his right arm like three times the size of his left arm and he's cut so much sisal rope it's he must have garbage bags full of it but uh pete and, and i've never talked to pete but man i'd like to i'd like to meet that guy one day i'd also like to meet uh uh nick shabazz it seems like a, a wonderful guy metal complex slicey dicey um you know the, the folks that i have met on on youtube have been wonderful wonderful guys and i'd like to meet the rest of those guys too i'd really like to see what nick shabazz looks like too as well and I know he's got the Batman face and uh, I've got a picture of what I think he looks like in my head and I'm curious to see exactly what he would look like all right so Steve I'll see what I can do about getting the pair of three it's not going to happen tomorrow but uh, if I can do it I will definitely do it for you and I just appreciate the suggestion it gives me something to strive for and it gives me something to kind of actually do too as well all right so um want to go over one more thing too as well so I, i've got my um axiom ocularis slingshot and i haven't had the opportunity yet to uh really go out there and set myself up a little bit of a range in the backyard uh dealing with um still dealing with damn foot issues i know i you know i had some really good news from the doctor i was able to start transitioning into walking without my cast but developed pain and swelling actually almost immediately and so uh, it's, I have to go back and I, we're going to do a CGI, uh, a CT scan on the foot again to see because he figures there's some tendon issues and some uh, arthritis may have been developed into the foot, but the swelling is quite bad and uh, the pain is quite bad too as well. So I also this morning, that's why I'm running a little bit late too as well. I had to stop at the orthopedic shoe store and look at a special shoe so I can learn to walk again without limping and yada 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 anyways haven't had a chance to do my uh, range in the backyard but i did throw up a pizza box hello Ugh. and uh, i just drew a little bit of uh, just a quickly drew a um a target on it because it's been driving me crazy having this this awesome slingshot here and the shot and so this is uh, i basically took it i leaned it against a tree and at 10 meters 33 feet and I took six shots and I my first four were total misses I mean uh, really low three of those four I, I hit probably two feet in front of the target and then the third the fourth one went way over top and then I have it dialed in and I did a couple of right here at uh, 10 meters so starting to get it kind of dialed in I look forward to really really trying to master this and see what I can do and I, you know, I got that pad, that idea from uh, Zachary Fowler, uh, maker of mischief. Uh, seems like a wonderful, wonderful guy. And uh, uh, yeah, his love of slingshots is very, very contagious. And just one more thing, I wouldn't mind doing and trying out and becoming expert at. You know, keeping my uh, my mind uh, going. All right. So, and uh, you know, that's about all I got to, to talk about uh, today. I kind of wrapping up the week. Uh, look forward to next week. I'm going to have my review of this um, Swayback. And uh, I'm going to also look at uh, probably something else here too as well. And um, yeah, now, if you have any questions, concerns, issues, you know, please, please uh, send me emails. Uh, you know, bigcanucker at uh, gmail.com or just leave it down in the description. You know, I appreciate it so much, you guys. is. Um, your guys' thoughts and you know calling me out on stuff and you know suggestions it, you know it's wonderful to interact with you folks um, i've met some great great people here 
And uh, you know what? Thank you so much too as well. Oh, I've also got a, uh, a Victorian Ox multi-tool. Uh, I forgot about that. I'm going to do that next week too as well. That was from another fella who um, sent me that. And, uh, you know, awesome. You know, Patrick Anderson, thank you so much again for that. That is a tremendous, tremendous um, thing that you did there. And I'm going to review that next week too as well. I've had uh, some good time in, in the pocket and it's, uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. All right. So and I'll finish off with... Now, I'm not sure if you guys realize that here in Lethbridge is where I'm from. I'm actually a Canadian in Lethbridge, Alberta. And we have a, like a little jail just on the outskirts of town. And funny enough, on a road called the Jail Road. And I was actually on my way um, to a little town called Coaldale the other day. And you drive right by this jail. And I ended up getting a phone call. So I pulled over. And then, so across the, uh, the yard, I ended up seeing this, like, this dwarf like this little person he was hauling ass across there and he ended up hitting the fence and going straight up the fence and then you know he was over top of the barbed wire and he was on his way down and you know i looked over at him i was startled and um you know we locked eyes and he just gave me this like terrible terrible look and uh and i thought to myself man oh man that's a little condescending <laughs> all right Thank you so much. If you like what you heard here, please, please give me the thumbs up and the subscription. Help me to spread my voice. Thank you so much. Uh, remember out there, because there is a lot of stuff that's still happening out there with the COVID-19. Be safe. Listen, listen to the experts. Listen to the experts. Please, please, please. Keep your stick on the ice. The shiny setup. This is a Big Knucker saying adios.